Hey, welcome back to Kotlin Conversations, where we're having conversations with just a few of the many amazing guests and speakers here at Kotlin Conf 2024. I'm Hoon Twit Dao, and I'm speaking with... My name is Rahul, and I'm a software engineer uh, working for Google on the Android X performance team. Awesome, Rahul. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I guess, I, I mean, you kind of mentioned already you're working uh, at Google, but uh, in, in terms of Kotlin, like I guess, was it through your work at Google that you first encountered Kotlin? And yeah. No, actually, I oh. I used to work for a long time ago. I used to work for Amazon. Uh, yeah. And uh, I was I, I used to ha uh, write Android applications. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, just because that was my way to learn Android and sort of like get to know the platform a little bit more. And I discovered Kotlin during the very early days. Like it was like probably point eight three years. Oh, amazing! Like, uh, so it was like pre stable. And then I think I discovered coroutines, and and I think I always hated async task and all the other <laughs> async cool. things that came in the platform. So yeah. this was like a breath of fresh air. So this is, like I've never never looked back since. So. Okay, that sounds brilliant. So it's not pure work, but you kind of independently just came around like this is the next big thing. Awesome. You're like um, I, I would say hipster is like a bad like a bad way of saying it, but like in in the best way, you were like kind of like an original original yeah, yeah, a Kotlin yeah. original. Um, so actually, what's fascinating to me, and I, I know that a lot of times like you see a lot of folks from Google speaking at especially at Kotlin Confer and other related conferences, but your talk actually isn't about anything you do at Google, that's right? That is correct, yes. Yeah, what are you talking about this year? Uh, this year I talked about how I hacked around my Sony camera uh, mm -hmm. uh, to sort of uh, work around the, the really bad app that Sony makes available on the, <laughs> on the Play Store. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I also have Sony cameras and I ha I, I can confirm it's not, it, it's, I, I want to say like objectively they're bad. Like, I, yeah. this is what we do. And these are objectively bad cameras and I, or bad apps rather. The cameras are great. The apps are not great. Um, yeah. So I mean, I guess like I guess that's why you did it. But how I don't know. How did you even start that? Because I, I've been kind of just even though I'm an app developer, just been staring at them like, well, I wish this was better. I don't know what I can do about it. Um, how did you get started like trying to make it better? <laughs> yeah, I think it's. Uh... So I recently bought the cameras. It's not been that long ago since I acquired the Mark V. I had an older camera where this problem didn't exist. It had an IR emitter, which mm -hmm. and so IR remotes uh, as much as much flack as they get, they're pretty reliable. Yeah, and they work yeah. hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Uh, so this was not a problem I had, and I had uh, 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 a piece of hardware that had an IR emitter that you could program. So I basically built my own intervalometer a long time ago for that camera. Oh, wow. Uh, and so when I switched to the Mark V, I realized that they got rid of the IR emitter com completely uh -huh, and they yeah. replaced it with Bluetooth LE, which which was like, Ooh. I was like, OK, this is maybe better. <laughs> I'll, I know, I'll, I'll, you know, I, maybe. I, I don't I don't want to like judge this camera too quickly. Mm. And then I think the thing that set off my uh, my uh, my alarm bells was that, that the, the remote that Sony sells for that that speaks BLE. Yeah. It's a hundred dollars. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I have to admit I I bought that yeah. remote. I, yeah. I actually bought more than one remote. Oh uh, no. in, in preparation <laughs> for this. It's uh, it's 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 a fun. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll talk about it uh, a little bit more uh, as we get further along. But so I got the remote. It was pretty reliable for the most part. But yeah. uh, I realized that the moment I uh, turned on. Uh, uh, the, uh, the app on my phone, yeah. it started draining the battery on the camera a lot more because it turn, tends to use Wi-Fi direct uh, yeah. when possible because yeah. uh, the, the the capabilities on the camera are just a lot more, uh, you know, uh, with, with Wi-Fi direct, they're a lot more available. Yeah. And so, and then I think the the latency on the on the, on the, on the remote was great, but on the phone was like really poor. Yeah. So I yeah. just wanted a backup because I'm paranoid that I'll run out of battery yeah. and, and I, I don't carry... Uh, CRC thirty two. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, they're big, chunky, they're, yeah, like yeah, 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 batteries yeah. that professionals use. Yeah, so I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to carry extra batteries. So I thought, like, wouldn't it be nice to if I could sort of hack around the the the, the bad app that Sony makes available? Because yeah. the only feature that I really care about is the remote trigger. So. Yeah, I, I actually I know exactly what you're talking about because yeah, there is an app. It has like a remote viewfinder, but it's it's actually horrible. I think it's so funny because I know like uh, maybe you can attest to that. Like as a kind of like a third party uh, Android developer, you know, I know I've had it drilled in my head for years about how different things like how bad. I mean, I know you're talking about the camera battery drain, but like how you know resources are kind of finite, and so you should be very judicious about how you write your apps when you're using resources, whatever it is. And I I just think that's kind of hilarious that I know it was your camera battery, but like. Wow, Wow, we just can't get away from software and battery problems, can we? You can't, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, I think also Wi-Fi Direct, while useful for this, mm -hmm. is a pretty inefficient way of like doing these kinds of things in general because Wi-Fi radios are not 
generally battery efficient unless you do all sorts of modem coalescing, which phones do, mm -hmm. that cameras don't necessarily do. Yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, I think they probably never intended it to be used as frequently as it ended up being. Uh, but I just wanted a quick and a battery efficient way of doing it. Yeah, and yeah. So and of course, as you said, the purpose are Bluetooth LE and as, yeah. as <laughs> uh, Bluetooth LE is not very stable, reliable, just not, it's just. Yeah, I think, so I, I, all, I've, I've always heard that Bluetooth LE is painful. Yeah. Uh, but I had never experienced that pain. So <laughs> now <you know. laughs> this, this now I have. Now, now I understand why people complain about Bluetooth LE. Okay. So, uh, so after kind of, so, so what did you do next to kind of like, you know, uh, hack your own solution? So usually the way I work on these kinds of projects that have like no, like that, that don't necessarily have a, a successful end, like outcome. Yeah. It's yeah. like I do a lot of like recon and I, I do a lot of preliminary research. And what I found out was some... So someone had dumped out like some of the EEPROM contents of the camera and figured out like some of the BLE characteristics already. Okay, yeah. And they had sort of done the work halfway, yeah. which which was promising, which which gave me enough information to proceed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I started to try and uh, and essentially sniff the uh, Bluetooth traffic between the remote and the camera, mm -hmm. which is uh, which was the next obvious thing to do. But I figured that the Sony remote and the camera share uh, a secret that they encrypt the traffic with. And so oh, all my okay. efforts to dump the traffic were in vain because Wireshark would not actually show what was happening. Mm -hmm. But then I think this was like around three, this is three weeks before the talk. So I was kind of freaking out. <laughs> kind of like, am I going to be able to do this talk at all? Yeah. Uh, because in theory you can do it. Uh, and like the writing the app once you know the protocol is not that hard uh, yeah. in theory. Yeah. Uh, but then I found that there's this other Chinese OEM that makes that claims to make a remote that seems to work with this camera. So I was like, maybe I should try that. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, three weeks before the conference, I ordered that. It took uh, four days to come. And then I started working. Yeah. And lo and behold, it turns out that the passkey that they use uh, to do key exchange uh -huh. is zero, 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 zero. And so that was enough. No, no way, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's how that's how the default bonding and, uh, and pairing works between yeah. remotes and cameras. Yeah. And so once I figured that out, uh, I Wireshark could then start dumping out that information and it could decrypt traffic automatically. And that that's basically how I continued uh, investigating. I, I, I was gonna, when you first said that, I was like, well, good for them for securing like yeah. the communication. Then you just said that I'm like, well, never mind. I take it back. So. Well, actually, I mean, to their credit, like you still have to sort of like proactively scan for a remote and add it to mm -hmm. the list of acceptable remotes on the camera. Okay. So it's not a security. I mean, you're like willingly adding a remote that that you probably control. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, yeah. That's fair. So it's not so like it's someone, not like yeah. so it's not there's hijacking. no there's no hijacking of your camera happening. So it's arguably an okay thing to do. <laughs> secure, secure enough. Secure, secure enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know that's that's okay. That's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. Um. So yeah. So then what happened next? So yeah. So that so that made me buy the other cam the the other remote. Uh, mm -hmm. And then finally, once I started dumping out the traffic, um, I had. Um, the the first the first dongle the BLE dongle that I used yeah, to sort yeah. of sniff the traffic. The funny thing is, uh, I have a lot of uh, BLE hardware in 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 the home office that I work for, and so the amount of wireless interference was so much that yeah. I had to physically move to a different room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the best room that I uh, moved to was uh, happened to be uh, you know uh, my my wife's room where there's not there's not that much hardware. So mm -hmm. like I basically I was occupying her room for days. <laughs> sure she was and then yeah, she was not very very happy about that. But you know. Uh, but then I finally managed to uh, get enough information to dump out the, the traffic. And then I started analyzing. So you, it's not enough to do it once. So I basically would pair unpair many, many times and, and I would record and replay and try and find patterns and what was going on between the remote and the camera. Mm -hmm. And then once I nailed down the, the minimal subset of commands that seemingly worked, mm -hmm. at that point I was like, I think I have enough information to proceed. And that's when I started uh, uh, doing the, uh, I, I mean, like the other part of the talk that I wanted to try was to actually use Compose Multi-Platform just yeah, because yeah. I wanted to write an app that worked on iOS and Android, and I, I wanted to experience uh, what the BLE stack or what 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 commonalities and distinctions were yeah. in the BLE stack. Mm -hmm. And so, I I was I was looking for multi-platform Bluetooth libraries, uh, and I found something that would seemingly work. It's called it's called Cable, which had all the right primitives that I cared about. Uh, because I wanted to raw access to BLE characteristics and services, mm -hmm. and I think they support that. So I, I looked at that, and so that that was when I started trying out things. Mm -hmm. And then the, my first attempt was to try out 
things using the uh, BLE hardware on the on the desktop for quick iteration just to see if I can send yeah, commands. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out that uh, uh, the the library doesn't doesn't let you do that. Uh, so you need to be on an Android uh, phone or an iOS phone because I think those are the only Bluetooth interfaces that they talk to. Oh. There's like a work in progress seal that the library is where the library is trying to uh, support desktop JVM yeah, yeah. or even native targets. And I tried to see interrupt my way through all of that problem. But then I thought I was that was like a tangential thing. I should just try and focus on the protocol. Right, right, right. But that actually sounds like a really, I, and I, I kind of like that idea a lot because I feel like, especially as KMP is getting adoption, I think these kind of very interesting use cases, especially with hardware, because yeah. hardware, of course, is extra hard. Is that funny to say? Like hardware is hard, but yeah, especially that would be kind of one of the things that I help un that helps unlock KMP for more applications like this yeah. is because of, like, as you said, the very the nuances of like these protocols on different platforms. I mean, that sounds like. I mean, I would if you are. Not that you haven't done enough in doing a talk for this one, but if there's a part two, I definitely think that'd be really cool yeah, for like so, KMP. I mean, I think the when I submitted the talk, I wanted to show off some of that pain as well, but I, I realized that I had enough for a 15 minute session and yeah. I didn't have any more time. So maybe maybe there is a forum for like a larger, uh, a more expand a more expanded version of the talk where I actually drill down to the other nitty gritty details that actually that might be interesting. Uh, but yeah. but for this, uh, then once I. Had, once I realized that I had to use a phone, uh, then I just like uh, bought, took my trusty Pixel testing phone out. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that one of the things that the Sony camera does is it lies about characteristics until the bonding is actually complete. Is that so that as a security issue? It's oh, a, that's another, kind of cool. It's okay. another security thing. Yeah. So you can, you'll query for a service and it'll tell you it exists, but when you try and connect to it, it'll be like, no, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, I was uh, looking it in, looking into, into looking into it more, and then I figured that they actually need uh, bonding to happen. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, bonding is not something that's explicitly covered by Bluetooth LE. The spec it's Bluetooth, oh, really? it's Bluetooth Classic. Okay. So this is like on the intersection of things that Bluetooth LE is not super opinionated about. Oh, and then that's when I had to dump, dive deep into some of, some of the other like Bluetooth Classic APIs, and then it turned out that uh, for the demo. I also wanted a controlled environment, a controlled environment, because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure someone in the audience was going to have a camera which was similar to mine, and yeah. I didn't want my phone to try and connect to their camera yeah, during yeah, the yeah, demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so essentially, I I I I wrote some code to sort of uh, only prefer devices that it has seen in the past. So I used the Android peripheral bond state uh, uh, primitives that are Android specific, yeah. and I did something similar uh, on iOS. Uh, where uh, the iOS uh, also has a similar concept, but calls it something different. So I, I exposed uh, a, a KMP interface for that, and I so wrote some platform-specific advertising filters. And then once the connection was made, the, mm -hmm. the testing part was fairly easy because you could just send commands and see how the camera did. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I mean, it sounds like you got to a point where you actually could write your own like controller. Like, do you do you kind of see yourself like, are you going to continue working on the project and really fill it out? Yeah, I think for the most part, the the remote trigger works, uh, the the intervalometer works also. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that I wanted to add was the ability to geotag a photo, which is something that I frequently do. So yeah, usually yeah. what I do is I'll take a picture, but then I want to attach a geotag to it yeah, from yeah. a phone because the, for the camera necessarily. Uh, so yeah. and that that interaction is quite clunky. Yeah. Uh, but if I could do it very quickly, uh, that would be great. So now, uh, it turns out that Sony has a, a has an API for that using BLE. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just need to figure out what the exact payload is. Uh, so that's something I might do. I, I love that, and I think that's so cool because I know, like you know, a lot of people. I, I feel like I think it's safe to say a majority of people will use their phones now as cameras. But I mean, especially for like enthusiasts and like kind of uh, you know photographers as yourself, like it's like, well, I actually have like a really really nice camera, but it's like the kind of quality of life things that mm -hmm. having a camera on a phone we just yeah. don't have that. That's right. So I like that you having to reverse engineer it, but the problem is, is that. Again, because people are all focused on phones and their camera, and I, I can see why like folk, uh, companies like Sony haven't quite put the effort, the enormous effort it sounds like, to actually make all this hardware yeah. and software like interact. So yeah. I, I kind of now I, I don't want to be too sympathetic to the companies, but seeing how much you went through, and I know that part of it was also just like sniffing it out and actually kind of reverse engineering it. Mm -hmm. And it still seems like a very hard problem. I kind of I don't want to say I have empathy, but I think I do have a little empathy <laughs> for how difficult this problem might be, especially with cross-platform or iOS and Android as well. Yeah, yeah. I think once I figured out the Android part, uh, BLE is painful enough on both platforms that you figure <laughs> out like what to do to work around yeah. problems very quickly. Yeah. So I think once I had the Android side figured out, the iOS side was not as painful. 
Yeah. Uh, the only the testing part is a little bit more painful because you actually need physical hardware. Yeah. Emulators don't work for Bluetooth mm -hmm. uh, testing, uh, which is a slight pain. But yeah. uh, you just need more devices. So, what's your main takeaway from doing this project, other than you know having like your own uh, your own remote? <laughs> uh, I was like pleasantly surprised with how easy it was to get started with Compose multi-platform. I got a shared element transition working for one of the animations in my app on iOS and I was like, wow, this is super easy and I would I would almost never want to write any UI kit code ever because mm -hmm. like, it's so nice uh, to do these kinds of things on Compose and animation APIs are super powerful. Uh, and also like uh, Compose multi-platform has come such a long way since the early days. Like I remember experimenting with, you know, back in, back in uh, during the early days of the announcement and I was like, it was pretty rough. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, But now it almost seems like it's ready. Uh, it's ready to use for like these kinds of apps. I, I like that so much again, because like I feel like, and I, I think I've said this before in other interviews where it's kind of surprising to see KMP has become so mature and so adopted mm -hmm. just because there's been so many multi-platform, uh, or I'm sorry, multi-platform solutions that you know have either been mildly successful or just non-successful. And I like that you're kind of like taking it and also pushing other sides of it that we don't get to talk to because usually MK, uh, multi-platform solutions don't get there. So now you're actually doing the fun stuff of like, okay, now how does hardware integrate? How does this mm -hmm. work? So that's really cool. And it, it's, I, and maybe this is like simplistic to say, but it's cool to, it's cool to hear that someone from Google is like so pleasantly surprised by, you know, how easy it is. And yeah. like, you, you know, you, that you yourself are surprised and like inspired by yeah. how it works. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would see uh, folks in the community hack on multi-platform projects and I'm like, oh, maybe I should try it out and see how, how far things have come along because clearly they have made a lot of progress and maybe I should check it out. That was my, uh, that was the other thing that I wanted to do as part of this talk. I just wanted to see how far things have come along. So, yeah. So it sounds like pretty good. But yeah, pretty, yeah, it's pretty great. Good yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. All right. Yeah. Um, I have to say, like, if, if I may say, like, your talk was one of the ones I was most interested in because I went through that pain with the Sony software and wondering, like, again, as someone who is in this space, why can't it be better? So uh, it's really cool to see that you took it into your own hands and did do your own thing. I'm actually kind of really <laughs> interested in your code. Uh, but yeah, thank yeah, you so I, much. Yeah, I, I plan on open sourcing all that code so you can see how how not elegant it is. <laughs> I'll try and clean it up as much as I can. You actually got it working. That would be way farther than I ever got. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, Rahul. Uh, like, uh, if people want to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, the best thing to do is probably my uh, my blog. Uh, so uh, if you if you search my name, I think you'll very easily get to my blog, which is where I publish most of my articles. Yeah. But then uh, you can also find me on Mastodon. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, I can't wait to check out your talk, and you, sh you all should definitely, if anything of this is interesting, uh, please go check out the recorded talks uh, for Kotlin Conf. And yeah, thank you so much for the Thank home. you. Yeah. Uh, and thank you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.